How's everyone doing? This is going to be a Blu-ray and DVD updates with 19 pickups right here. And if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. Uh, Blu-rays, DVDs, and one comic book. Yeah, so let me know if you read the comic book as well. Uh, first up from Lionsgate is Hacksaw Ridge. And right on the front cover it says, The Best War Film Since Saving Private Ryan. And I co-signed on this. This was amazing. Breathtaking cinematography and very well acted, directed. I was directed by Mel Gibson. In the last couple films he directed, uh, Hacksaw Ridge and Apocalypto were just phenomenal. And he's also been a great actor as well. Uh, his personal life is a little crazy. You gotta kind of separate that, but uh, he did a great job in Bloodfather and uh, Get the Gringo, which are two underrated movies, big time in my opinion. But this is based on a true story of Desmond Doss, who in Okinawa, uh, one of the bloodiest battles of World War II, saved 75 men without firing his rifle. And his faith was tested the whole time. He was picked on and uh, ridiculed because of his beliefs that he didn't want to kill anybody and he was still going to war. And he felt it was his duty to do so and he didn't want to ever pick up a rifle. And uh, this just, again, the cinematography was second to none for a war film. And it's, you know, blood and guts and gore, but uh, really heartfelt as well and a very important message and a great cast here. And uh, a great release too from Lionsgate ton of special features on here um, and I really like the ending of uh, right here the exclusives to Blu-ray too the ending of this film where they show the real Desmond Doss and some of the other real people I thought that was really cool to see and just an incredible film I would highly recommend the heck out of this one if you're into war films one of the best movies of 2016 and let me know do you think I should get the steelbook or the 4k release for this let me know what you guys think the target exclusive steelbook looks pretty sweet but I would love to see this in 4k I think this would be just a phenomenal release for that. Uh, next up, another release from Lionsgate is Manchester by the Sea, a very depressing but emotionally honest movie. I think Casey Affleck turns in probably the best acting performance of his career, and I think he deserves the Oscar. Uh, Michelle Williams was a little bit underutilized, and uh, it has a washed-out hue to the film, which reflects the bleak tone, and also portrays uh, New England very well. And uh, it's, again, such a depressing movie, but one of the better movies of 2016, in my opinion. And it's basically about Casey Affleck's character. Uh, his older brother passes away, and he's put in charge of his son in raising his kid. And he kind of kind of can't really deal with that. He's still dealing with his own demons and things that happened in his past. And uh, just a fantastic film. Again, it is depressing, um, dramatically paced, but so well done, so well crafted as well, and just phenomenal. Uh, and this is directed by Kenneth Lonergan, who uh, did a phenomenal job here. One of my favorites of 2016. Next up is the most overhyped movie of 2016, in my opinion. That is Moonlight. And uh, this is directed uh, by Barry Jenkins. I could not log on to Facebook for pretty much the past, I don't know, six, seven months without seeing an ad for Moonlight. This is probably the most advertised movie of 2016, too, even more than Star Wars Rogue One. Um, again, this is just everywhere, so overhyped. And I just think it, for no reason, essentially, I think because the lead character in here is gay and black. That's, ooh, people are just eating up the hype soup. Um, it just wasn't anything, you know, that special. It's a good movie, but not excellent. Uh, it's got tons of Oscar buzz and global uh, Golden Globe nominations and all that kind of stuff, but it just wasn't excellent to me. It just wasn't up to that level. Uh, I think Mahershala Ali was criminally underutilized in this. He's a phenomenal actor, great in this role, but he was only in the film for a short time. The movie's told into three segments. The lead character here uh, as a kid, then in high school, and then as an adult, kind of dealing with everything, uh, coming to terms with his sexuality, coming of age, loneliness, longing, self-discovery. Um, again, it was a good movie, but just not worth all the hype in my opinion. I know I'm in the minority in thinking that, but I just wasn't impressed by it. Next up is Loving. This is another one to me. Uh, this is released by uh, Universal. This was another Lionsgate release. But this is another one to me that lacked the dramatic, cinematic punch. I think it's an important story um, based on a true story in 1958 in Virginia uh, where it was illegal to be you know, white and black and married. Interracial marriage was illegal during that time. Um, and it's just shocking to me that it wasn't even that long ago that, that was the case. And um, this case, they brought it all the way to the Supreme Court, and it was ruled in their favor and ruled that, you know, that that should be, you know, not prohibited, that, you know, couples of all different races can be married. And uh, great performances here uh, from Joel Egerton and Ruth Nega. And Ruth Nega, I first saw her in a horror movie, low-budget one called Isolation, about uh, killer mutant cows. So she's come a long way. 
Um, but this one to me, I thought it was an important story, but really nothing that special cinematically. Just it just lacked that dramatic punch for me. It just ah. um, and this is directed by. Uh, Jeff Nichols, who's a fantastic director, and he always has Michael Shannon in his films, and Michael Shannon was in this one too, but only for a little bit. Uh, but I do like the cinematography in here a lot. I think that was uh, really well done. But overall, it just, again, it just, it, you can take liberties sometimes with the Based on True Stories. They always do that, and they could have done that here to help this film a lot, and they didn't. Next up is uh, Marvel Studios' Disney distributed release of Doctor Strange. Oh my gosh, this was such a visually stunning comic book movie and I love the slip cover to this too embossed right there and some nice foil design I can't wait to see Disney and Marvel films doing 4k ultra HD releases because this one was made for it too it's kind of like inception-esque with some of the buildings and the way that they collapse and stuff uh, great acting here and just a ton of special features look at all those special features but yeah Benedict Cumberbatch, Joelle Ijafor, uh, Rachel McAdams, Mads Mikkelsen uh, and Tilda Swinton. I would like to see a little bit more of Mads Mikkelsen, but he was still great in this role. Basically about a surgeon, uh, Stephen Strange, and he gets into a car accident and he can't use his hands and he's just downtrodden and is willing to do anything to uh, get his hands to work again. So he goes to this temple and he's opened up to a whole new world, literally, and he finds out about the mystic arts. And I really like that combination of the mysticism too. And you know, they have, they have to save Earth and uh, just an incredible film, and I love, at the end, there's always little teasers for other stuff, and there's a, kind of two teasers here at the end of the uh, credits here, but love this one. And a great release from Disney, too. Next up from Lionsgate is the uh, recent in their Vestron Video Collector series. This is the number eight spine right there, The Gate. This is one I watched all the time growing up as a kid. I actually watched it on Halloween, too, with uh, young Steven Dorff in here. Absolutely love this film. Tons of special features on here. Uh, great job with this release too and I love that they chose this cover art for uh, the slip cover and the uh, inside artwork too uh, the old school DVD the special edition one had terrible artwork like Justin Bieber looking kid on there with some sandals I guess it was supposed to be Steven Dorff but it didn't look like him at all uh, so that was just terrible so I'm so happy with this old school artwork but it's basically a group of kids uh, Steven Dorff and his older sister and then Steven Dorff's friend uh, they're at uh, their house alone. The parents are on vacation in a way, and they uh, unknowingly open a demonic evil force. And they're, I love the creature, the big giant creature at the end, and then some of the little creatures and other ones too. And they have to, you know, fight to ward off the evil spirits. And uh, it's just phenomenal. Love this one. Um, I love the mixture, kind of like suburbia and then the evil. And uh, this is one I grew up on. Great nostalgia here. I love what uh, Vestron Video, Lionsgate, they're doing with this series. Next up is a fantastic uh, looking release right here from uh, Arrow Video. Uh, I love all the releases. All their releases are just phenomenal. Even, like, see, there's some films that they've released that I haven't been a fan of film-wise, but the releases are just so spectacular that you're just in awe of what they do. Uh, this is one that I have not seen, uh, but some good uh, special features in here. And again, I love what they do with the cases, the newly commissioned artwork, uh, the booklets, the disc artwork. There's the, the booklet right there. And then there's the reversible artwork too. So uh, again, this is one that I haven't seen from 2016, but I heard some crazy things about it. And even the synopsis on the back is super crazy. Um, visionary and bizarre slice of Mexican cinema. Um, extraordinary and unsettling film experience. Sexually charged nightmarish journey into an otherworldly dimension of carnal desires and excess. Holy moly, right there. Uh, graphic, powerful imagery of Gaspar Noe's love and Enter the Void with the surreal, hallucinatory impact of Alejandro Jaworski's uh, and Jaworski and We Are the Flesh's bizarre psychedelic head trip mixing intense, outrageously explicit imagery and profound allegory. Whew. Man, just all those adjectives just has me so hyped for this one. I can't wait to check it out. Next up is another release from Lionsgate, Trespass Against Me. Um, the synopsis in here is super short. It's basically a heist movie gone wrong. He's a reluctant criminal, has to find a way to escape the clutches of his fierce father, who's an outlaw, and the police as well, an action-packed crime thriller. I really enjoy Brendan Gleeson and Michael Fassbender acting-wise, so looking forward to checking this one out. I haven't heard too much about it. Uh, next up are two releases from Olive Films. First up is Police with Gerard Depardieu. Um, this is set in, uh, this is from 1985. And this is uh, basically him being a French detective, kind of hard-nosed detective, and he falls 
for a drug dealer's girlfriend and his honor is kind of tested by that. Next up is Evelyn with Pierce Brosnan, Aidan Quinn, and Juliana Margulies, uh, set during 1955 based on a true story of a, a custody case. This was during Irish law. If uh, parents got divorced or was, the people were from a broken home, if you will, the children uh, weren't allowed to be raised by any of the parents. They were put into uh, church-run orphanages, and it's just basically um, Pierce Brosnan's tale of trying to get the custody of his kids. Uh, next up is Cold War II from Wellgo USA. Uh, this has Chow Yun Fat. It's the sequel to the 2012 uh, Cold War movie. Basically, a criminal mastermind escapes from police in Hong Kong in the streets, and people are trying to find him. So it looks like it's going to be all out action awesomeness. And love Chow Yun Fat. Next up, uh, this is from Media in Sync. And this is uh, three films by Cyril Morin in American Trilogy. Uh, the Activist, which is uh, 1973, South Dakota Wounded Knee, uh, Native American activists are arrested and thrown in jail, and then next up is Hacker's Game, a cyber thriller, and then NY84, where it's about uh, three people, Kate, Anton, and Keith, who are young artists living in downtown New York and dealing with the gay cancer, so I'm assuming AIDS. And next up are the DVDs, which first up is a full moon release Killjoy's Psycho Circus, which they're putting out these Killjoy movies just one after another. Uh, Killjoy Goes to Hell just came out like two months ago. So yeah, if you like Full Moon and Crazy Clown, Killjoy, uh, he's here with uh, Batty Boop, Punchy, and Freak Show. So yeah, all kinds of craziness is going to ensue. You have a nice double feature with Killjoy Goes to Hell and Killjoy Psycho Circus. Next up are two releases from uh, Vision Films and Monarch Home Entertainment. Uh, right there, we've got Fatal Instinct, which is a crime thriller. They're looking for a serial killer. And then Tie the Knot, which has uh, Tara Reid. I'm not a big fan of her acting-wise, but she her character takes an impromptu trip to Mumbai uh, to escape her overbearing mother, and she becomes friends with Sonia, who's a surgeon, and her uh, Sonia's parents are pressuring her to marry a nice Indian man, and, he, and she meets um, this guy right there in the back. He's a musician slash... Um, bartender and then Tara Reed, I guess has her own romance thing going on next up are some releases from Cheesy Flicks Cheesy Flicks releases a lot of uh, cheap films uh, low cost wise very inexpensive but then the transfers aren't that great honestly they're like VHS to DVD rips essentially but this one right here Jack the Giant Killer in fabulous Fantascope Technicolor uh, looks to be awesome kind of a Ray Harryhausen-esque creatures and stop motion uh pretty princess evil sorcerer or heroes so it looks like it has some like greek mythology and crazy looking creatures can't wait to check this one out uh next up is one that i had never heard of before and it's werewolf massacre at hell's gate sounds like a witch put a curse on a small town and i guess there's werewolves involved now one thing i will say about um cheesy flicks is they've changed everything as far as the release they're always inexpensive but um uh, they used to have official artwork on the discs. Now it's just burn on demand kind of stuff where it's just the title, just the plain disc. And then on the back, you get the burn like purple look right there on the back of the disc. So that's one thing I, I get it. I, I don't know how much the cost difference is, but I, it just makes it feel so cheap. I don't like that at all. I'll give you an example. Octoman, uh, Octoman right there, which is an older release from them, has the official artwork in a nice colorful. And then on the back, it's the you know, officially pressed and licensed DVD regular right there. So it just, it just looks so much better. This, I remember watching this forever ago, super cheesy movie, uh, remote Mexican fishing community discovers radioactive waters and there's like mutant octopus uh, with some human features and they crawl around and start killing people, I guess. It's been forever since so I've seen this one, but I remember being really cheesy, but entertaining. So I'm looking forward to revisiting that. And then the comic book, which is from Grindhouse Comics, Escape from the Dead, which looks amazing. I don't know if they're on a moon or somewhere in space, but you know, I like the, the chick in here too. They have, this is almost like Walking Dead-esque right there. And there's a chick right here, great artwork, who has like an s and mask going on. There she is right there. But oh, the artwork is amazing here. I can't wait to check this out. I've checked out a few um, pages already and I'm hooked. I can't wait to visit this even more. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll through give you an idea of what to expect but yeah super awesome looking 
right there, and that is Escape from the Dead. One man, one mission, one million zombies. So that looks amazing. Really nice, glossy uh, cover right there, too. So there you go. Those are all the DVDs, Blu-rays, and the one comic book. If you've uh, seen the movies, uh, definitely let me know what you think of them or check out the comic book. Um, leave me a comment or video response down below. Hope everyone's doing well. Take care.